think uh, if you grew up in the 70s, it makes you naturally cynical because of what happened in the 80s. If you remember those early 70s, there was a lot of consciousness in that time. Yeah, interesting. And if, you, if you're from the from the community of black people, man, yep. everybody's looking at each other, dapping everybody. Yeah. When I first came to New York in 1979, I had to learn how to not look at people. Man, in New Orleans, I was everywhere in New Orleans. I wasn't in no one place. I played in every area, didn't matter. My mom was from the projects. My grandma lived there. I, would, I went everywhere. Everybody was, what's happening, bro? Look out, what's happening, little daddy? You know, you look at everybody. Yeah. Remember Marvin Gaye's music and Stevie? It was like a consciousness time right. in those early 70s. Right. And all of a sudden, when you start to roll around to those late 70s, you know, the air started to get a little tight. Then the 80s, the country backed away from the support that had been given in the 70s. Then we started to, you know, we, 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 we regressed, man. We started to have, I always tell people, if you told anybody from the 1970s who played in a funk band, who played love songs all night, the Commodores, the Ohio players, you take your pick, the Isley Brothers, Earth, Wind & Fire, the reasons that we feel, I mean, I, you know, that's all we did, is play them gigs, that there's gonna be a time that people gonna be calling women bitches and it's gonna be normal. Man, we just slapped your great grandma and said, no way in the world that's gonna happen. It's no way nobody saw that. Why do you think it happened? Man, it's a lot of pressure. It's always a lot of pressure to return to the menstrual show, man. Nations are like people. We all have some type of flaw. We all have something wrong with us. And each thing that we have is about us. Me, you, it don't matter who it is. That we, some of us do better jobs of covering it up. And uh, so with some of the more obvious ones, it might be substance abuse. Another person might be lying. I mean, I, nobody knows what another person's thing is, oh, unless you're really close with that person. And for some reason, you return to that. Like I think of myself, the dumb stuff that I've done, man, I've learned about, learned about music like as an art. It's interesting, so many people have parents who are in a certain space, and so they probably take some of that from them, but not everybody breaks out in the way that you did. Why do you think you broke out in the end? It's a mystery to me, really. It was more spiritual, because I wasn't playing nothing popular, really. I, I never thought about it. I, I didn't, I'm not really like a kind of populist type of person. You know, I mean, I played in a funk band in the 70s. I had a good time. But that was never my thing. Like, you know, just kind of following everybody and trying to trying to recruit people or going along with whatever was the fad. I don't I, I don't know. I think I talked a lot in interviews when I was young and I took what I was saying seriously. Some of it was controversial. I didn't know it was controversial, to be honest. So it became more of that than the music. And then along the way I was developing my musicianship. I was always serious about it. But you know, it's hard to be to be really serious about something if it's not a lot of other other people with you. And when it's if it's something that says a uh, as isolated as jazz is and was. I was lucky because I had been around people so much and had such a good time playing ball and being with my friends and you know playing in a funk band. I had a social life already when I was in high school. It was so expansive that once it came time for me to be serious and accept a certain type of isolation. I didn't want to accept it, but I, it, was, it was tenable. For a lot of musicians I've known uh, down through the years at a certain point when they realized that they're not gonna have the type of fan base they want if they're real serious. It's just, it's too much. So, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not judging them. I'm just saying it's a reality and I understand it. Why did you think that mentally you were tough enough to deal with that? Man, I just seeing my father and them struggling all that time. Right. You right. know, I grew up going to clubs in the South with five and six people in them. And you know, people people struggling, man. <laughs> people having a hard time. People with no money, it's not, not fancy clubs. It was just Southern life. And my dad was trying to play jazz. Nobody really want to hear that. Everything is segregated. But he, can't, he, he could play, and he kept playing. So I, I guess with my early childhood, just seeing him and the way he was, he was very cool and always very, uh, he was humble, you know? And he didn't complain about not having people, and he wasn't, uh, he wasn't bitter about it. I learned watching him and listening to them play. And his band, it was like four of them, was a quartet. And they always were scuffling, man, in their lives, in their personal lives with drugs, some of them. A couple of cats died from uh, from heroin overdoses. It was in that time. So they, they live hard lives, but they love the music. I had a love for them as people. I didn't like the music so much, but I liked them.